Welcome to a visit to the Guthrie Theater. We are speaking today with Joe Halcombe, dramaturg on the production of Hugh Leonard's Irish classic, Da. Don't you dare follow me. Your dad gets off. Noah's flood was just a shower. Lift, lift. I have it, but jump when I lift. I come lift, on. shoot, scat. Lift, I don't want you. Go on, go on. I'll keep up with you. Leave me alone. Oh, says your old one to my old one when it comes to the waxy dargo. The director of the play, Doug Hughes, really grew up with the play. Right um, his father, Barnard Hughes, originated the role of Da mm -hmm. in the Broadway production and then went on to play the role in the film that was made about right. ten years right. later. Right. So it was very much of the fabric of his life and he also has a close relationship with the playwright. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't a matter of having to make as much, uh, having to, to define as much for the director because this was something that he knew like the back of his hand right, since right. it had been so much a part of his own life. Um, and the same thing with, with the actors, both from what they absorbed from Doug and also the, own, the work that they had done. Um, some of the actors, not all. Um, were our Irish American. Um, one of the actors is from Ireland, and so they had a great deal of background themselves. And and it's a contemporary play. It's right. not something, you know, where we're going to have to work on 17th or 16th century, right, right, right. you know, historical support for the play. So mm -hmm. so a lot of the time and place of the piece was very familiar to the actors. So, I'm children. Oh. Ah. Mm -hmm. What? Is new? Oh no. Long time, so? Oh no. Yes, but I you knew I had something to tell you. Six years ago. Yes? I finally got the theme music from King's Row. Is that so? <laughs> Only electronically simulated stereo, you know. But still. Still. That was a good film. Oh, wasn't it? I got Billy really Hope for going with you to that film. My mother wouldn't let me play with you over that film. Why? Oh, pretend he doesn't know. Never <laughs> mind. You made me miss me elocution class. Oh, so I did. <laughs> ah, sappy day. You remember that expression we had? Ah, sappy day. <laughs> no. hmm. I was glad I kept up with the old elocution, you know. A great standby. Always pronounce properly and look after your appearance. Can you talk a little bit about the playwright uh, Hugh Leonard and perhaps how autobiographical <laughs> this play is or how important it is to his whole, his trajectory of his writing life? Well, it's, it's purely autobiography. Right. Um, this is a play where you can't, you really can't talk about the play without talking about the playwright. Right, right. Uh, Hugh Leonard was born in Ireland in 1928. Mm -hmm. um, he was born in what was then called the Howis Street Hospital. Now it's known as the Dublin Maternity Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, when he was 10 days old, he was adopted and, and he was born of a of, uh, single mother. When he was 10 days old, he was adopted by a woman from Dalkey, mm -hmm. uh, Margaret Doyle Keats. She's known as Margaret Tynan in mm -hmm. the play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she took him home, and her husband was a gardener on the local estate. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, mm -hmm. the characters and the incidents that we meet in the play are a retelling of his life. Right, right, right. Um, he went to school at the Presentation Brothers School outside of Dalkey. Um, he grew up in Dalkey. He went to work for the Irish Civil Service. Um, after he had worked for the Irish Civil Service for some time, one evening a friend of his suggested, because he'd never been to the Abbey Theatre right, in right. Dublin, suggested that he go to the theatre. Mm -hmm. And he did, and he tells us that after that his life changed. Right. That, that he knew somehow he was to be a playwright. Right. Um, he submitted one play to the Abbey Theatre, mm -hmm. and, and that was rejected. And then he submitted a second play, this time using the name Hugh Leonard, right, 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 yes. which had been um, the title, the main character of the first play, and, right. and it was accepted, and, and his career was launched. Right. Um, he was extremely prolific, mm -hmm. and 
wrote a play, you know, had, had about a, a play produced every year at mm -hmm. the Abbey. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, his plays were very sophisticated, very funny, very popular, mm -hmm. but there was very little personal in them, right, right, and right. and he turned a real corner. Um, his father died in 1968, mm -hmm. and as in response to what he was experiencing in in over the death of his father, he eventually wrote the play mm -hmm. Da, mm -hmm. for the first time really incorporated his life, and it is his life, right, right. and of course that. You know that's history. It was a tremendous right. success, right. and then a tremendous success on Broadway right. in won this several, country. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. won so, uh, several Tony Awards. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Angels will be happy to eat. Now that will do. That's a good expression. Did you ever hear that expression? Did I? Thanks to you. Until I was 12 years of age, every time the rain came down, I had a mental picture of a group of winged figures standing around a hole in the clouds, relieving themselves. Go away. I'm working. I'm clearing up. Oh, yes, that was him. A gardener all his life, intimately associated with rainfall, i.e., the atmospheric condensation of warm air, which, when large enough to fall perceptibly to the ground, constitutes precipitation. Hot air rises, the rain falls. But as far as he was concerned, that kind of elementary phenomenon was. Codology. Codology. No, it was easier, funnier, more theologically orientated to say that the angels were having a pee. <laughs> you want to put that down on your place? I die first. What are you doing? Sitting there while I have a cup of tea in your hand. I don't call it full. It's empty. It's full. Get up on out of there. I won't touch that teapot, do you hear me? For 42 years I've been through this, you and that bloody teapot, and I know it's going to happen, so don't touch it. Not a drop of tea in that cup. No wonder he's delicate. Look, will you? Ah! Ah! Jesus, Mary! And Johnson. I knew it! <gasps> That's hot! hot. Too damn headstrong. Couldn't you have waited until the man came in and I heard? Jesus! Obsessed with for an anti crust of a teapot. Oh, the handle must be hollow. Oh, say nothing. Empty. Can you talk about um, this? So the difficult personal personal force in this play is the whole father-son uh, relationship, and then also the shame and stigma of being an adopted child. Can you talk about that that personal pain in the play? Yeah, um, and in fact, that's been interesting because very often in in, in talking to audiences mm -hmm. who have seen the play, one of the reactions that we hear is, you know, th there's no resolution. Right, right. Um, you know, here is someone who has a tremendous chip on his shoulder, if you want to refer to it as that, ab about his parents, about his father, mm -hmm. and and we don't really see that resolved. Why is that? Um, this is something that, of course, Leonard was working through in the play. He did two other autobiographical pieces after the play um, mm -hmm. that are prose pieces. Mm -hmm. One is called Out After Dark and the other is Home Before Night, right, right. in which he again draws out these same characters mm -hmm. and these same incidents. Um, I, th I think we have to think back, first of all, to you know, the time in which he was born and the time in which he was growing up mm -hmm. and the cultural, um, the environment. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was great shame Mm -hmm. in illegitimacy mm -hmm. and it was something that he never quite mm -hmm. got over the fact that he was illegitimate 
Um, there's even a, a part in the play where he's told by an employer, you know, don't, don't, if if your friends don't know it, don't tell them. Right, right. Don't help them basically load their guns against you. Right, right. right. Um, so it, it was a terrific shame. Mm -hmm. And the other piece was that you know if if we if we travel to Dalkey today, mm -hmm. it's kind of a posh place. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's a lovely seaside village mm -hmm. and and um, beautiful shops and mm -hmm. and the what had been corporation houses which were you know basically public housing have been turned into mm -hmm. um, very nice apartments right, that go right. for a great price right. but when he was growing up there that wasn't the case mm -hmm. it was a very very poor place mm -hmm. and he wanted nothing better than to get out of there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the the stigma of illegitimacy along with this sense of being trapped trapped in a family that was uneducated, um, tra even though they were willing to give him right. all of the advantages of education, mm -hmm. they really represented to him everything that he didn't want to have anything to do with. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's something that he's had to work through all of his life. Right. and in consequence thereof has said she'll never talk to me again. <laughs> the junk man can have the rest, because I want what I want. An hour from now, that fire will go out. There'll be no one here to light it. I'll get rid of you. I'm sweating here because I couldn't wait to put my coat on and be off. What do you say to that? God, son, you're getting as gray as a badger. Old Drum was right about you the day he came here to give me the reference. Oh, Drum is not the worst of them. He had you taped. Was he here today? He was at the mass. Next to the pulpit? Was that him? I wouldn't recognize him. God, he's me on the You can talk. We're a decent bugger, but who you know he called you? <laughs> the enemy! Charlie! Where it comes down, where it takes out! Who's that? Charlie! She want me to come up to you! I've <laughs> forgotten what she looked like. When you get off your behind and call him, he's in the lavatory with his curse of God books again. Did you hear your mother? Come on now out of there. Come on, you fuck. Come on, you called. If I put my hand to you. That's where it goes. Oh, you're slouching around and you're hopping and you're skipping and acting the gold boy. Mr. Drum is halfway up the path. I say that's where it goes. Put your hands and you're after the cowboy on the green bank. <laughs> Book Jones. You're always behind the times. I haven't played cowboys in five years. Who jagged with the Tim McCoy, Randolph, and Scott? You'll get a body a headache. And an engineer. When Mr. Drum comes in. Can you talk a little bit uh, about this, the set? The set designed by Monica Frawley, who's a set designer for many years at the Abbey Theater in Dublin. Can you talk a little bit about how that set came about? Well, the set is really intended to bring, um, beca because the play takes place on a number of time levels. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, the present is 1968 mm -hmm. in the kitchen in the home in which um, Charlie, the main character, has grown up mm -hmm. following his father's funeral. Mm -hmm. But then there are, are memory pieces that mm -hmm. go back to his young childhood, mm -hmm. to um, his early adulthood, mm -hmm. to times when he was working for the Irish mm -hmm. Civil Service, times just before he got married. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the set really has to travel mm -hmm. between that present of 1968 mm -hmm. and the past of all of those other scenes in his life, and then kind of a neutral area. Mm -hmm. Monica, in the process of researching the play and getting ready to work on the design, right. was in a little shop in Dalkey. 
right, right. and found a postcard. Right. Um, and it's a picture of Dalkey Strand, and but it was it was pretty beaten up. It was right. pretty torn, and so she came up with the idea of the postcard which is blown up and quite large over the set, mm -hmm. really tying it together, bringing the past and, and the present and the, you know, both the distant and not so different distant past all together. Right. So the play travels. Um, you have the time in the kitchen, which is very realistic, mm -hmm. very, you know, very uh, just like you'd be in, in any Irish kitchen in mm -hmm. 1968. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, <coughs> uh, Kind of a balcony area, which represents the you know overlooking right. the sea, and, right, right. and the postcard is above it. Right. And most often, the mm. characters go up there for mm. these scenes from the past. And then there, there's a, a front area that's full of roses, mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of a neutral area mm. um, with the roses certainly representative of Charlie's father's wonderful ability to grow roses as mm -hmm. a gardener, something he was very proud of, mm -hmm. but also somewhat of a funereal sense, mm -hmm. you know, a, a funereal setting mm -hmm. um, where a lot of the conversations and the speeches that are in a more neutral area take mm -hmm. place. And, mm -hmm. and so it's really a way of, of tying all of these times and places together mm -hmm. because they are all together right. in Charlie's mind right, right. and in his experience. I love the jaggedness of in the in the postcard as if this is a memory that's a little bit that has been torn. Torn apart. Yeah, yes. right. torn. Don't lie over the table. You'll get a hot back like old Totterdale. Oh, Totterdale was a decent man. What's the book? Story of Sam Michelle. McKaylee, you thick. The state of that shirt. I'll give you a fresh one. It's only Tuesday. Take it off. I'm speaking to Joe Delafield, who plays the role of uh, young Charlie in Hugh Leonard's uh, Da at the Guthrie Theatre. Can you talk about uh, the role of young Charlie and the, the curious mixture of, uh, of anger he feels towards uh, his parents and his background and his longing to escape from that uh, background? Sure. Well, I think so much of his anger and, and resentment towards his parents stems from his, um, his being illegitimate, Ill illegitimate and adopted mm -hmm. and, his par and the stigma at the time of, of mm -hmm. what that meant mm -hmm. in, 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 that, uh, in that culture at the time. Mm -hmm. And his, um, his mother's a not letting him ever forget it and telling everybody about it and, right, right. and holding it over him almost right. and constantly <laughs> telling everyone she comes in contact with about right. how much Charlie owes her for saving him and taking right. him out of the hospital and and so he, he can't really escape from that mm -hmm. from that constant reminder of of his illegitimacy right. and um, and with his father I mean it's it's that as well and it's also his viewing his father is he's is the older Charlie calls his father a sheep right. and that he just follows and is easily taken advantage of and doesn't doesn't um, demand what he deserves in terms of his work and, mm -hmm. and his life and and um, and that's very shameful, I think, to mm -hmm. Charlie. Mm -hmm. um, and and as I play him as an adolescent, I think it's it's not as clear um, that that's the cause of the resentment. But as you see how he's developed and how he's gotten older, you see that. And with um, Mr. Drum, who takes him under his wing mm -hmm. and gives him a gives him a job, mm -hmm. he comes right out and says, "You should be afraid of him, and you shouldn't live one life. You shouldn't live your life." In his footsteps at all, you need to right, you need right. to get away. Is is sorry, is is drama sort of an, uh, another father figure, a sort of an alternative father? Yeah, figure I mean, he's he's um, older. Charlie also says that he he seemed he's I don't know the exact words, but something of a surrogate father almost. Right, right, right. But he's a very difficult man, and and he Charlie can never please him or live up to the expectations that Drum might have. Mm -hmm. um, and Drum doesn't allow himself to to put away the standards that he set up to really form a full-fledged father-son relationship. It's it's there, but it, it sort of is stunted and mm -hmm. it doesn't really full, fall through. But but um, but Drum gives him the awareness right. of the need to escape and to strike out on his own mm -hmm. life. And and uh, there's wonderful humor, particularly in the scenes mm -hmm. with uh, with Drum. Has it been difficult to balance the humor in the scenes with the with the anger in his character? Yeah, it, it, it's something I, I worked on right. a lot to try to find that balance because it, 
I saw it easy to maybe fall in the trap of just being kind of a surly, angry right. kind of teenager. Right, right, right. Um, but to really get the depth of what caused all that, what we discussed right. before, was right. very important. But not to not to make it too dark and, and overshadowing, to, because there's so much humor, and when the right. humor comes out, it, right, right. it offers such a nice balance to that. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a balance that I'm, I'm still finding, I think, and it, it changes from performance to right. performance and gets more fine-tuned. But right. the writing is so brilliant, it's, it's all there, the, the anger and resentment mm -hmm. and humor and, mm -hmm. and the, the lightness, the balance right. is really in the text. Right. It's, it's a, it's the humor is very much the humor of anger, of a kind, mm, it's not of a cold, yeah razor sharp kind of a humor of it. It's kind of a cutting wit rather than just sort of a clownish. Uh, well, and it, it's so true as well. I mean, there's there, this, the scenes, a scene that I particularly enjoy is the scene when um, when he's writing his thank you letter and, and his mother's on top of him to write the letter correctly. Right, and, right, to, right. And, and all of that embarrassment is still there. He feels like he shouldn't have to write his letter, but his mother's on top of him to do it. And that, that mother-son relationship is so right. identifiable. And I think that mm -hmm. the fact that people can see such a universal sort of adolescent parent relationship going on there. The humor right. just naturally sparks up. Right. Now, if, is it fair to say that there's a finally a, a level of respect, begrud sort of grudging respect, is sl sl eventually sort of shown to the ghost of his father, but it does, is, there a, is that respect lacking in the relationship with the mother, or is there some kind of connection with her as well at the end? At the end? Um, or anywhere, I don't know. Well, I think, I think the play focuses so much more on the father-son oh, right. relationship okay. that right. I think you can see it more clearly there. I think the text doesn't necessarily provide that same connection with the mother necessarily. It's more of, of an antagonistic relationship. It's not as fully developed. But I think, I think Barbara and I have, have brought a little bit of that in. And I think right. in Charlie, the older Charlie and the mother has that too in the scene where she uh, had gone out to tea and is talking about the, the man that she thought maybe she was going to marry before Doc came along. Mm -hmm. You sort of see a mutual understanding of the disappointment of life and the need, the need to come to terms with your past and accept your future. And it's, it's there, but it's not as, as concretely detailed in the text, I think, as the relationship with the father. God, Titan, says Father Carter to me, we'll have to shoot you in the wind up. Uh, <laughs> what a fool I'd be to leave my sons bits and pieces here, where any dog or devil could steal them. And what for? To go to England? And maybe land myself in an early grave with a fool they serve up here? No, you'd rather stay here instead, like a magazine of cabbage and dine with that. I'd send it to myself, no better man. Inside or out of it, you were a millstone. Okay, I'm talking today with Tony Marcus, who plays the role of Da, uh, the father. Let's talk about the conflict between the father and the son in this. Uh, actually, there isn't very much conflict on the father's part. I think right, the father right. absolutely adores this young man. Right, right. That they, he was ten days old when he was uh, dropped in their laps. Right. They had uh, they had a number of children, but they were all stillborn. Mm -hmm. And this was an opportunity for them to have a child. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the father just. Uh, dotes on this young man mm -hmm. and from the depths of his poverty tries to give him as much uh, wealth in in um, natural things right, right. without being R Rousseauian about it he says look uh, look at them mountains that's a view if you were rich enough you couldn't buy it Right, right, right. And the young man, you know, just looks and says, oh, my. He absorbs it. And eventually it comes out later in his life mm -hmm. as a playwright. Right, right. But at the time it's coming into him, it's, it's when he was seven, he's told this. When he was 10, 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. up until the time he goes off and works for drum. Mm -hmm who brings him to another level of intelligence and, uh, and education and appreciation mm -hmm. of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a, just a small sequence in the play where it's a discussion of the spelling of Maguire. Right. Simple, but still so profound mm -hmm. in Leonard's uh, saying, this is how careful Drum was. Mm -hmm. And this care 
has uh, um, spilled over right, right, right. Onto, onto young Charlie, though he doesn't realize it at the time. Right, right, right. There's a ship! Is that it? Uh, is that our ship coming in? Where? Oh, no. That one's going out. The locks come in tomorrow, Dad. And God, no, it might! <laughs> We'll be on the case back then, Dad, won't we? Where are you, Rich? Won't be far off it. What do we do? You, when we win the sweep. We won't do a shagging hand turn. Go on. <laughs> oh. There's a wonderful, uh, bittersweet, tragic sense that starts to hover over when you realize that the father is a ghost and, has, and all of the reflection, yes. the memories are coming back. And this, that, that sense of, of finally recognizing, as you say, what you've inherited from your parent it comes through at the point where he, where he's, he's the ghost is, is basically is showing that to uh, Charlie and making him realize that even though Charlie's bitter and sort of an slightly still an angry sort of a, um, a adult, he's sort of sl a slow. There's this wonderful, tragic, sweet yes. realization. Oh, yeah. It makes oh, the yeah. play fanta just a fantastic experience. Yes. Can, you, can you talk yeah. about that just a little bit? Well, I, I, I think that um, uh, you're right in saying that. Uh, there is an under underlayment of what appears to be anger, but actually it's just guilt. Right, right, right. The old right. Charlie is coming back and remembering things that make him feel guilty. Right. And the guilty makes the the guilt makes him angry. Right. And um, though there is this just chasm of uh, of love. Right. I mean, it's 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 like. Like, it's like filling the Grand Canyon full of, of water, mm -hmm. right up to the very top. That's, there, there's all this love that's there, but he can't get past his own sense of guilt. Right, right, right. right. And it's a, it's, a, it's a pity. You're saying, well, Jesus, grow up, right, will right, you? Right, right, right. I mean, go and see a therapist or something. Use some of that money that you're making on, <laughs> on plays and, and get a life. Right, 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 right. That's something you should learn from your father. Doug Hughes, fabulous director, absolutely fabulous, right. has this play so well uh, ingrained and so well uh, deciphered. There isn't, there isn't a line that he uh, is unsure of. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just an absolute delight to work with him. And thank God I had somebody like him because I came in 10 days late. Right, right, right. And I was on my left foot starting off, but boy, he was right there, you know, just with a lifesaver, you know, every time I was floundering, right, he would right. say, here you go, here you right, go, right. this is where you are, this is where you need to be. And he said, the critical thing of this man is the one line that he says at the very end of the play, sure, I enjoyed myself. Right. I enjoyed, remember the joy. Right, right. So that's, the, that's, that's da. Right. He's, he's a happy, joyous, joyful, loving man. 